Well, hello again. Oh, gosh, this is an awful question to have to ask, but uh, <laughs> I'm afraid history demands it. The question is, has Trump committed treason? Uh, well, in the build-up to the November presidential election and all the awful events that followed it, Trump as president and as a former president, he's repeatedly made provocative and possibly seditious arguments about the presidency and the election. That's not in question. But the question is, do these claims, these um, exhortations, statements, arguments, and so forth, do they constitute treason? Well, a lot of people think they do. So let's, let's look at the arguments for those who say yes, they do constitute treason. Those who agree most importantly point to the assault on the nation's capital and Trump's role in fomenting and insti instigating it. By the way, I've examined that whether he instigated it or not in a separate video and that's linked at the end of this video. <laughs> uh, Trump's slogan following his failed re-election uh, and even his exit from the presidency was that the nation must stop the steal. In other words, it must take action against central government to reinstate him. That is clearly treason. A leading scholar at the University of California and an expert on the subject of treason, really the number one chap on treason, his name is Carlton Larson. He's reviewed many of Trump's repugnant acts during his presidency and and he's concluded that they didn't quite qualify as behavior of this sort as treason until the assault on the Capitol. At that point, he concluded that Trump had crossed the line. His role in constituting and instigating that attack clearly constituted treason. Even the much maligned Mitch McConnell, the minority leader in the Senate and therefore the ranking Republican there, acknowledged that Trump had provoked the people into the attack. Uh, Trump has repeatedly gone easy on Russia and even thwarted investigations in his own government of possible collusion with Russia and their influence and interference in his election. If Russia's considered an enemy of the United States, that constitutes treason. If not, it's still in contravention of, contravention of other legislation regarding behavior of this sort, and it's a felony anyway. Uh, Trump's desire to under, undermine government process and subvert democratic processes were never more dramatically demonstrated than in the famous telephone call to the Georgia election official, which many of us had the pleasure of listening to on YouTube, when he famously said, I just want to find 11,780 votes. <laughs> that was an attempt to overturn the results of a democratic election. What else can you call it? And as Senator Mitt Romney, one of the few Republican senators, and by the way, a former presidential nominee, who has faced Trump's behavior in an honest way stated, quote, what happened was an insurrection incited by the President of the United States. Wow. <laughs> okay, what about those who say, no, no, he didn't commit treason. What, what, what do they say? What are, what are their arguments? Well, first of all, the Founding Fathers were very specific about what constitutes treason. They, they were good uh, thinkers. It has to meet, meet one of two tests. It, 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 it means either helping the enemy or conspiring against the U.S. government. And Trump has done neither of those. He, he was not directly responsible for the attack in January since no court or tribunal has uh, affirmed that he did. And there are no examples of his having aided an enemy. Any questionable relationships with foreign governments, all those Eastern European places, were not with countries that can be classified as enemies. We're not at war with them. Uh, and during his famous speech to the mob, just prior to their march on the Capitol, Trump said, quote, I know that everyone here will be soon marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and, and patriotically make your voices heard. That certainly doesn't sound like advocacy of violent sedition. Well, what is my take? I, I, well, I've got uh, three points. <laughs> First of all, number one, uh, his instigation of the assault on the Capitol is the key. That event absolutely crossed the line. He has committed treason and should be duly prosecuted for it by the appropriate authorities. It's just as simple as that. 
Number two, <laughs> uh, hundreds of those who participated in the assault on the Capitol have been arrested. Many are being charged with serious crimes. Uh, some are going to do jail time. And Abraham Lincoln raised an important point about this. Uh, he said, must I shoot a simple soldier boy who deserts, but not touch a hair on the head of the wily agitator who induced him? What wonderful words. <clears throat> and uh, number three, number three, <laughs> uh, a side effect of all of this is the fact that federal law makes it a separate felony for anyone who owes allegiance to the U.S. citizens and knows of the commission of treason and conceals it and does not tell authorities is guilty of a felony. As soon as members of Trump's family and close advisors are made aware of this one, <laughs> it is likely that they'll turn on him. Let us not forget that Ivanka famously referred to the mob that stormed the Capitol as patriots. Uh, and then she hurriedly withdrew the statement, perhaps a text from a lawyer. Well, watch the fireworks to come. That's it. I, as usual, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did the usual stuff, give me a like, subscribe, comment, uh, notify, and so forth. And I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.